Angel Shark Cry V is the latest entry into Capcom's hack and slash series D lowercase MC. It revolves around a triplet of albino hellspawns designated with the task of protecting London. You start as Nero, trying to feign masculinity by doing car repairs with his magic demon arm. Do not ask why he has a magic demon arm, when suddenly a mysterious figure presents him dead? No, that would be stupid. Then he fucking rips his whole arm off, turns it into a sword, and portals his way to whatever dimension teaches arm ripping as casual classes. Nero is pissed, but luckily a month later, Benedict Vumberbat shows up, coincidentally right as literal hell breaks forth from the city, to explain that the demon who stole Nero's arm is none other than the new king of the underworld, Eurozone. He then segues off the class bastard, leaving you to do all the heavy lifting. And by heavy lifting, I mean heavy shooting. Shooting of these bug people abominations. After casually strolling through an ant farm, Nero comes to fight Yurizen, but finds his fellow devil hunter, Daniel Radcliffe, worn out alongside two bitches he's never seen before in his life. Dante, what the fuck happened? I overpowered this meager. I'm gonna stop you right there, you raisin. You mess with the best, you die like the rest. Anyway, smell my fucking motorbike sword. You fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eurizen as he uses what I like to call the Crystal of Infinite Bullshit to absorb damage for him and attack whilst he reclines in his gamer throne. He has a set of attacks, but you won't be noticing any of them as you'll be too busy panicking over the fact that this ugly-ass bug person isn't going down as easy as the last 20. Eventually, you get your shit kicked in because you fought the Lord of the Underworld with one arm, you fucking idiot! Thankfully, Daniel Craig gets woke, becomes an embodiment of Satan, and calls Nero dead. V, what the hell is happening? We have to get out of here, Nero. There's no time to explain. We have to stop Yurizen. As our favorite ship escapes almost certain, not really, death, they meet up with someone the law cares about, but the game doesn't, so neither will I. If you thought that was enough to put our intrepid adventurer down, you would be partially correct, but after a month of licking each other's wounds, the gang returns to central London, now with smoking hazards and sick credit sequences. It turns out what's growing in Hyde Park is a Clyphod tree that feeds off the blood of British people. As such, Nero is back with a new vibrator arm his lesbian best friend gave him to stop the Clyphod from growing any further by killing every Brit left himself. No matter how much their mutated bug forms may plea for mercy, Nero will slice and dice through them with his cutely named sword and gun duo and a plethora of robot magic hands that do things such as electrocute, propel, drill, and bend the fabric of planet space, all in the name of getting the sweetest combo. Nero manslaughters his way through all three enemy types on Tower Bridge before coming across the root of a local Clyphod tree. Now, if you were some kind of European, you would despair at such a sight. However, as an American, Nero is directly descended from George Washington, so merely emulates his cherry tree cutting skills to beat the game. Moving onwards to Piccadilly Circus, Nero continues to shoot things with his gun and swing both ways with his sword, which is vital as after each wayward swing he can rev his sword to charge it with pure bisexual energy and then use it to power up all his attacks. Nero continues onwards through bugs, tentacles, and four five hundreds. Enters a hotel, discovers the anti of Tavor, leaves the hotel, collapses the floor, discovers homeless Italians armed with square pizza cutters, and, like the proud Tory party voter he is, cuts them in half. Nero finds a phone booth. Feeling cheeky, he calls Nico to tell him he found the Asian tomboy girlfriend she always wanted. <laughs> Nico may be outlandishly horny, but she has a portable customization booth with possibly the most satisfying transition screen ever. Hey. Nero wakes up from his satisfyingly induced coma in an ambulance. You should watch where you step, big guy. Might stub your toe on something. Nice breath, asshole. I think you need to floss those tummy teeth of yours. Dick. This furry fuzzball is far less dangerous than he seems. However, Nero is non-judgmental and opts to redirect the lost furry back to his convention at the XL Center, rather than slaughter him for his valuable pelt. Nero does this by spanking him in the ass for three minutes, avoiding his hairballs and throwing him in the right direction. Look man, you want to get the Bakerloo line to Baker Street, the Jubilee to Canning Town, and then the DLR to Prince Regent. It's right outside your convention, okay? To yeet, or not to yeet, that is the question. Whether tis danker in the mind to yeet the slings and arrows of dank fortune, or to yeet arms against a sea of cringe, and by yeeting end them, to yeet, to yeet. <coughs> Sorry I'm late, I was catching up on a little reading. What the fuck, V? He just needed to get to his convention. What is a furry but a human wearing a demon's skin?
God damn it, V. Nero soldiers on, discovering he has a pocket zip line, walks three steps and triggers a cutscene. Bats! He soars through the air like the majestic eagle he is before tripping and landing in the sewers. He cleanses the area of Clypod roots with the grace of a tree surgeon armed with a combine harvester. A friendly neighborhood spirit arrives to try and show him a more graceful way to trim his garden rake. But Nero slaughters her clock tower looking ass for being a creepy bitch, leaving a library in ruins along the way. Feeling cocky, he phones Nico, telling her yet another stripe has been added to the pride flag, instantly summoning her to the Twitter debate about it. On the matter of repetition, Nero walks into another Clyphon infested gothic piece of architecture, but this time finds the leveled up version of a crab script from Subnautica. And there's no mod to disable their spawning now! This battle is an absolute clusterfuck of lights, probes, grapples and choirs, which is as much about fighting the demon as fighting your latent epilepsy and depth perception. But with enough effort, Nero can equip the jumpy arm and do backflips around her until she dies. What the hell? Is that Resident Capcom enthusiast, the Spear Hunter? Oh wait, no. No, it's one of those gals that was fighting with Dante. It's Lady. Women of names too, Nico. They ain't just objects of your sexual desire. Don't do anything I would do. Please don't say that. Elsewhere, Adam Driver is going through a stroll with the last Spixmacore in England and runs into some unsavory fellows in Borough Market. V's gameplay is intense, I promise, as you fixate your attention on standing around and ordering your endangered bird a programmable cat to play the game for you. You may think Kylo Ven, with his frail feminine figure, would opt to be a conscientious objector at this point and merely run away, however the spirit of his own arsehole entraps him within areas filled with enemies and refuses to be wiped until he has defeated all of them. This happens multiple times. Eventually, the demonic hooligans pursuing V corner him on a rail line, so he uses his black materia to summon Meteor, which turns into Ganondorf. This game has no idea what it's doing, and I love it. You may have noticed that the game keeps placing random letters on the side of my screen, like an excited toddler in nursery. But just like that toddler, it wasn't paying attention and thinks S comes before A in the alphabet. Pebble Gay Ride 5 is not so much about surviving until the next mission as it is about absolutely styling on your opponents, and your style ranking is a measure of this. If you want to know what the best way to build style points is, just imagine the coolest thing your character could do and then do it. Launch an enemy in the air and then stun him with your God of Thunder vibrator. Badass. Shove a sword charged with bisexual energy up a furry's ass. Savage. Aggressively read poetry in front of a demon as he is eaten alive by your pets. Now we are fucking talking! V continues his walk through Southwark, coming across all the same foes Nero beat up earlier and dispatching them with far more ease. He finds a phone booth and calls Nico to tell her that he needs someone to help him design his Sherlock cosplay outfit. Unfortunately, he is overheard by an AO3 user. When he refuses to read their 20 chapters of Sherlock X Moriarty fanfiction, they become enraged and enter battle with him. This avid writer is a disappointing first boss for our resident edgelord. You distract the beast by using Scratch, Blue, and Ganondorf to attack its alternative accounts, whilst you, being the studied reader and critic the V is, write an abusive comment carefully disguised as critique under their work, killing them instantly. This reveals a giant dinner plate looking motherfucker, which V takes one look at and fucks off. V continues aimlessly wandered ah! aimlessly slaughtering his way through the underground until he reaches the surface again. He finds a telephone and decides to call Nico, telling her about his new crotch tattoo in the shape of two guns. Can we please discuss my ban? I, I didn't even break the rules. You posted 40 images of smut, gore, and snuff hentai that span the same meme of the mods as Soy Wojaks. I I'm sorry, I, I won't do it again. Look, I just want to play a monk. Our Discord has rules and you need to respect them. Just give me one more chance. Fine. Get the Devil Sword Dante dropped. Then I repeal your ban. What's this I hear about a Devil Sword? Uh, nothing. Say, have you ever played Among Us? Pardon? Because you're seeming pretty sus! This boss battle is much more fun than the last. The fallen Discord user has been granted the ability to warp time by the moderators, alongside being able to instantly move you to whichever voice chat he pleases. Fortunately, his animated profile picture allows V to see him coming from a mile off and dodges attacks, leaving poetry copypasta in his wake. This plucky young member may down your pets and even land a hit or two on you, but with enough effort you can code an infinite loop in Scratch and kill his horse instantly. His horse. You only got his horse. He then gets away because V is slowly losing the ability to walk. This is not a joke.
Well, she ain't dead. Got a pretty smoking body, though. You know, I don't trust you alone with this woman. Is that a dinner plate with legs? Nero is forced to leave this helpless woman with Nico in order to deal with some rebelsome chinaware with the power of Naruto running. This boss is hard in the literal sense. Nero can't make any progress beneath him. Thankfully, as soon as he works out how to get on top, he pummels the demon relentlessly until it gives out from exhaustion. Nico returns, noticeably more excited. Yo. V is back, and he has vital information for us. You can't travel through here in a car. With this, V and Nero must navigate the London Underground by themselves, or whilst Nico finally scores with Lady. The main feature of the Underground is the Oyster Card top-up points. Each of these points consistently outputs Reminder to top up his oyster so that he can afford his journey. V must fight. Fight the urge to put 100 quid in his oyster and take 50 trips from Rystam to Newham till he looks like one of those homeless men on the circle line. But V already looks homeless, so with enough raving madness he can coerce the underpaid employee working the gates to get him in free of charge. I'll never pay your hopper fare, City Khan. V finds a phone booth. Feeling despicable, he doesn't call Nico, as he knows it is impossible for a car to travel through here, and disproving such would mean all he's done in the level was pointless. Doesn't stop Nero, though. The avid car denier meets up with Deadweight in a West End theatre. Mana, mana. Do, 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 do. Mana, mana. Do, 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 ah shit V, we've interrupted something beautiful here. Mana, mana, Disney's finally doing something good with Jim Henson's work. What evil lurks. I must spin. What? Okay, I guess we're spinning now. Our anime protagonists are now forced to fight the Muppets in an intense and fun boss battle, where Nero risks life and limb whilst V sits back and treats him like another familiar. I would not recommend playing as Nero in this, as all the V's particle effects make it impossible to tell what is happening. But I hear death sounds, so I say there's a 50-50 chance we killed them. Damn. The fuck did you do, V? Why was the track spinning around like that? Shut up, Nero. I need to get you a sword so you can stop being a dead God damn it, V. There's a sword in that house, Nero. I need it. I need the sword. Now there's nothing in the way of Nero getting his revenge, except a brisk walk through a demonic tree. Thankfully, Eurozen set up some helpful elevators, powered by Vor, that take him further up the tree into 101 random combat encounters. Nero confidently struts in to be met with an average mountain goat. I guess it can do ice stuff? Never mind, it's dead. That was a tad underwhelming. Back to this shit again, we travel further up and catch a rerun of an old Muppets episode, which turns out to be only an ad break before we are yet again back to this shit. I hope this part is something substantial before I have to- ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME?! Nero finds a phone and tells Nico that he's a Redditor, so she comes instantly. Now it is finally time to face off against Euremic. Eurizen, your reign over the human and demon worlds ends here. Uh, I saw Dante if he's still around. Oh yes, Dante, he's dead. Killed him, quite sure of it. Don't go looking for him. Uh, let's change the subject. Do you know Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs is trying to make me pay taxes? Quit playing around, Urethra. Let's finish this. Because I do not recognize the sovereignty of the Queen, let alone believe in her rights to my hard-earned- Oh, you're not kidding. It's time for the rematch, as Eurozen once again employs the aforementioned bullshit crystal to distract you whilst he keeps himself hooked up to IV bags filled with human blood. That or Red Bull, I'm not sure which. Nero has to pummel the crystal with everything he's got whilst juggling Eurozen's attacks until he shatters it to pieces and finally lands a blow on the demonic tax evader. Nero is happy at first to see he has ruined Eurozen's writing hand, but that quickly changes when your mum lol overcomes his crippling diabetes to get up out of his chair. Bloody child! Break into my house, wake me up from my nap, and then make me get out of my Game of Throne? Razor doesn't charge cheap for these, you know. And now these bloodstains will never come out. So I'm feeling real motivated now. Now the proper fight begins as Eurozen unleashes all his pent-up rage from high blood sugar and caffeine levels. The crystal is back, but destroying it is harder this time as the big bastard is much more active with his attacks. And by active, I mean this whole thing is hectic like a paranoid schizophrenic is imaginative. It's tough. He's tough. This whole battle is tough. In fact, the only thing that isn't tough here is Nero, who dies instantly. You know what? I bet you're here from the government. You were sent here to make me pay my taxes, weren't you? Well, tell Boris he isn't getting a penny. 
and you are getting out of my... Who would dare? I killed the women. I killed the man. And now I'm killing the boy. I'm about to get the whole family. <laughs> Devil may cry. Hey, 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 Nico, Nico, I found a hot tomboy Asian girlfriend. And who the fuck are you? I'm V, and a powerful demon is about to resurrect and lay waste to London. I know this because... Don't think about it, but I need your help dealing with it. I've heard that exact same line five fucking- Why do you always speak like that? What? Nothing. I've heard that exact same line five fucking times in the last decade. Oh, trust me. This one is special. Really? It got a name? The fuck are you doing with your mouth? I'm building suspense, dammit! We snap back to reality with V and the almost present as he searches for the devil sword a Discord user told him about. To get there, he must pretend to find difficulty in the hordes of incoming demons as he watches his pets demolish everything in their path. V finds a telephone and calls Neat. She's going to burst through that wall over there, isn't she? I don't know, V. Told you. Eventually, V comes across three Resident Evil bosses placed around the sword like enemies in a video game. Oddly amused by this, V is forced to gatecrash the boss's cutscene. The battle for Raccoon City Police Department is wild, and it turns out the big eyes are not the weak spots. Jesus, these guys are hard to read. Or maybe I just can't read. You know who can read, though? V. And he wins instantly. What do we do now, V? Well then, there are two choices before us. We risk turning Dante into a kebab to wake him up, or we let Urinal beat Nero into a fine puree. Not much of a choice, is it? Oh well, here goes nothing. <laughs> 